We are going to begin this as a series called I Ching Reading Books. The reason I'm calling it that right now is because I am going to be recording doing I Ching readings for people and we'll be using certain books. So I will show you what the books are. This will be I Ching Reading Books 1 and we'll probably save it in the um, I Ching folder. So there are several books I'm going to be using. When I do readings for people, it won't be just one book, but I will be using several books to get a good idea of what one needs to know from the questions asked by those who want an I Ching reading. So first of all, we're going to use one here, which is called I Ching, or Book of Changes by Richard Wilhelm, translated into English by Baines, B-A-Y-N-E-S. This is the Bollingen Series XIX, Princeton University Press. I have had this one longer than I've had any others. And in fact, I have two copies because the first copy I had is so worn out, I had to get a second one. Now, not only are the readings excellent in here, but it's in three parts. The reason it's in three parts is one is the main text with the hexagram, its meanings, its judgment, the lines, and Wilhelm's commentary. Part three is the same thing, except it has extra added commentary that are part of what is believed to be Confucius or his school making additional comments. But in the center book, there are 10 treaties in there, and I will be using some of those. The reason I will be using those is because in there it actually has the Confucius commentaries on certain hexagrams and certain lines. So I will be looking at those also when I will be answering people's questions about what they ask about the I Ching. So this Wilhelm Baines translation will be one of the main ones that I use. Now, another one that I'm going to use is the 10th anniversary edition of the complete I Ching, a definitive translation by Taoist master Alfred Huang, H-U-A-N-G. Now, this is another excellent translation, which he has done by himself. And what's interesting about this, of course, you have a different translation, because when you're translating an oriental language, which is a picture language and not a word language, into words in English or any other language, you're dealing with the pictograms, not the wordgrams or words. You're, you're looking at pictures that are made into words and so that what we're using. Now we're going to stop here and continue shortly.